So I selected this uh, topic because I think that most of you, because I know everything, most of you, I w no, that's the, the first part of the joke. Okay, wait for the second part. Most of you don't know about the search modules, indexing modules, or think you know. Well, maybe you actually know, but I think there are lots, there's lots of things that you don't understand that, or that you don't know, and you don't know how to use it to do things that you didn't know it would be possible to do with this module. So I will show you what I think you, you, you should know uh, about it and how to do things, interesting things. Um, the second part of the joke, Linda, was... Crap, uh, I forgot the second part. You cut me. No, what did I say? That I think... Oh, yeah, the second part is that I actually didn't know either because I forget all the time what is inside. So by doing the, uh, the, the session, I'm like, oh, yes, that's, that's good. I forgot about this thing. No, by looking at the code and the hidden features all the time, and this is why we record the session, so that next year I can watch myself again to remember. Okay? I was saying that an, as an anecdote yesterday. I watched the shape session from uh, Amsterdam a few months back. I learned so many things by watching myself. I'm like, wow, he knows. <laughs> you know, that's, 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 I, I forget so much that, uh, yeah. So that's why we record them. It's very good. Um, uh, good. Uh, next year, I will do the conference by myself. I will be the audience and uh, that might. <laughs> Will be cheaper and more food for me. So search API. Uh, I will start with very simple topics like how to use it, how to use the search modules, um, and what you can do with out-of-the-box uh, features and modules. Uh, then we'll see how it works internally, how, how technically everything appears with search engines, and then uh, focus on the API and what's available for module developers to, uh, to build custom search front-ends. If you have any question, please interrupt me. Nick will be the the bus. The bus. Thank you. It's off, I think. Um, so first, uh, different modules we have. So we have the orchard.indexing module, the Lucene module, and orchard search. Orchard search. Three different modules. They could be a single, but it's split so that you can extend um, each of them. So the most important one is the indexing module. This one is responsible to detect changes for all your content items and create the indexes, the, the documents inside the indexes. And I will explain later more details. It also, so it's based on content handlers. So the indexing module defines some content handlers to detect changes in the content item. It also has a background task, or we'll see later in the future a uh, background job, to process changes. So whenever it detects changes, it will store the, it will track the change, and the background task will process the, the this change. And you, it lets you also configure indexes within Orchard from the admin. The Lucene module is just an implementation of the Orchard.indexes ab indexing abstractions. So Orchard indexes indexing cannot do anything without a concrete implementation like Lucene. There is only one implementation, and one which is actually sufficient for most of the, the usages we want to do in Orchard, but you could use your own engine if you wanted. On .NET, this is the only one native that exists. There are services that can do that if it's not native locally, like Elasticsearch, um, Azure Search. This could be some kind of engi engines that, you that will replace Lucene based on your own needs. But let's say 99% of the sites, even custom sites, will be OK with Lucene, and m more than OK with Lucene. And then there is orchard.search, which will depend on indexing and an implementation like Lucene, just to provide you with a front end to do some queries, search queries. This is just front end management, orchard.search. Most of the things is provided by indexing. And this orchard.search is very simple. It's a controller and a widget. That's it. And some configuration, very simple configuration. So it will be OK for, let's say, more than 50% of the websites, but feel free to just create your own mycompany.search because you will have custom needs. And this is where you will use the APIs that I will uh, show you later. So search is very simple. Don't hesitate, copy, paste it. Um, so demonstration, how do you use uh, these modules? So I have an, an Orchard setup here. And uh, just for the fun, 
and to confirm that uh, David, 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 um, Belgium, David, um, was right. If you're wrong, well, uh, but this is the same database, so you're right. <laughs> so con framework, content item, Orchard framework, content item version, which is the same like content item. Page nine, good job, you won. So this is database. Um, it was just to check. So I, if I go to the dashboard, the first thing you would like to do is go to modules, enable indexing, lucene, and search, and it will be incomplete because it's not sufficient. But what I recommend when you want to use search is just to go to recipes because there is a custom search recipe to set up the search environment. So I will just execute that. And because this is a default recipe, I have a page called the Welcome Orchard page. So if I go now to my website and I just do slash search q equals orchard, I have one result, which is the page. It just works. One click, and I have a search engine working. I have a search engine, but um, there is nothing to query here. Okay? It's just the URI. But this is provided by the by the search module. What I have also is two more links, indexes and search. So if I go to, um, well, let's, let's take a look at what the recipe is about. So if I go in the search module, there is a recipes folder, and this one is the one. So this recipe only appears in the modules tab because there is no, it's not a setup recipe. Okay. If it was a setup recipe, there would be setup somewhere. I have to check for the main recipe to see how it's done, but this is uh, what it contains. And it will enable the search feature and the listening feature. And indexing is not um, Im is implicit here, because search and listening depends on indexing. So it will be enabled too. So search and listening. And then it says the page will, be, will have these settings, type indexing, indexes search. So it just says that the page content type will be indexed in an index named search. And the blog post will also be indexed in the search index. And later, this one can be ignored because it's obsolete, but there are two comments because the search modules and the index modules come with, with comments. So this, this one is from the indexing module. Index creates search. So it creates a new index, search, which is the same as this thing. So if you just enabled the modules um, search and Lucene, you will miss the configuration on page and blog post, and you will miss an actual index, because the modules don't provide index by default. You create indexes. And then there are search settings, which will let the search module know on which information the default search should, um, should uh, work. Like here, the body from the page and the title of the same page or the, the blog post. Okay? And also, what search engine, search, sorry, what search index the search module needs to use for the front end. So this is what is configured. And you could do it everything by, uh, by hand, but it's better to use the recipe. So here we have, if I click on indexes, we have one index because it was created by the recipe. The index is called search. And you can either update or rebuild the, the, um, the index. Update means process any document that hasn't been added to the index yet because it's a slow process, a background task, and it might um, it might work in just five minutes. You want, to would you want it to happen now? So you can say, update now. Rebuild will delete all the documents from the index and recreate them one by one, OK, on the fly. And then you'll see that all the fields, all the data that the um, indexing process has found for the documents that are inside the, the indexes. And they can mix different types of data. Is it uh, big enough? Maybe not. OK. So here it says, I found an ID, a type, created, published, modified, author. All these come, come from the default providers and the common part. And title body come from the title part and the body part. And if you add fields or other, or other parts or other types, you will have more, well, if you, have, if you add content fields, you will have more indexing fields added also to your documents. This is what is available in this index later. You can also create indexes. So here I have one. I created it by the command line, by the recipe. But I could create another, indexes, another index like this, 
with a name. It will be empty, no document. So this is what we will do uh, later. But we had indexes for the index management, and we also have the search page here, where we can customize how the search behaves. So here, this is what index name do you want to use to drive the front-end search. By default, here it's the search, because in the recipe, we say use the search index search to drive the search setting part. This is this one. The fields, title and body, these are these ones. The idea is that when I use the front end and I do Q equals Orchard, Orchard will be looked up inside the fields body or title. <coughs> okay? This is why we have here Orchard in the title, and this is why we find it, and I'm sure also in the body, so it's first match, best match, only content, can't be better. So this is to configure which fields you want to look into. So if I just unselect that and I do another search, it should return no result. I won't try because it might fail. So you'll trust me. By the way, by doing a session on the search module, I found many bugs. Do a se Sipke added bugs to his session by working on that. I'm sure he fixed some also. Um, by doing the session, I, oh, that doesn't work. Look at the code, fix, so it's committed now. So that's a good thing to, to do uh, demonstrations of the module. Um, so this is for the fields. Narrow search to current culture only is when you do a search, it will just show the content items in the culture of the current context. If I only have one culture, I don't care about checking this chat box. Otherwise, you can do that, and uh, you will only see the content item from your current culture. And this uh, thing is new in uh, Orchard 192, which is uh, a frozen branch right now. And this is to let you customize how to render a search result. So this is very new. This is the default that you have today. So it's, let's say it's hidden and it won't break anything. But with that, it will just dis define a display type for the results in the front end here. So this thing is a summary view of the content type page. So if I just go and in my theme or in any module, go and say in my views, I will do a page dot summary. I could use content dot summary also. I will have, well, this is bad. This is not what I want to do. What I want to do is, and I will restart. What I want to do is um, define a custom one. So I can say, no, don't use the summary because the summary is not good for the search results. Use the search display type. Search result. Oh, save. And now I can do page dot search result. And you might want to display it with just display. How does it work? HTML dot item display text link. Link is better. Of orchard dot content management content item model dot content item. Okay, I just want to display the link to the content and nothing more than that. It's loading the new shapes and then search. Now I just have nothing. Sorry? Brackets where? You have to talk louder. What doesn't work here? Item display link. This is the simplest demo I have. So content item is eye content. I'm sure it doesn't take the. No, I'm sure. Well, it finds the shape, otherwise, it will complain. Let's see. No, it doesn't find it. It doesn't find the shape. Something like that. <laughs> the display type is search result. Let me say content. Is it a dot or a dash? Search result. And it's not complaining that the shape is not found, which is weird. Because if the sh because there is one result, it's there. 
Oh, now it works. So page was not, oh, it is content dash page dot search result and not page dot search result. That's weird. OK, so this works. You see, we learn all the time, even the simple things. And I'm sure it's in the documentation. OK, we should read the documentation. People complain about documentation. Read it. Uh, welcome to Orchard. So that works, OK? Item display link. Good. A nice link. And it works. Beautiful. So that's, how n that's a new feature in 192 because someone complained that you can't customize, and that's true. Otherwise, you will have to clone the search module just to change how it's rendered in the search engine. And you might not want, yeah, it's better to, have to be able to, co to customize it for search results, like an alternate. So that's about the, um, the, the customization of the search module. Um, sorry, where is that? Here. Dashboard. So we have the search. Now, if I look at um, the features we have for search, we have something called, it's, I think it's by default. So we have content picker search, we have admin content search, media library search, I will enable them after. But we have a widget which is here by default. So I will just add a new widget in the header, a search widget, search form, and here title search, save, and if I go to the front end, then instead of typing in the URL, I have a little form to search something. And it works very well too. Okay, hello doesn't return any result, welcome, works. Okay, this is just a simple form issuing a get on the same URL. So the search module is really, really simple, almost simplistic. So you can always um, override it, and that's it. Now, with the other modules, search, we have the admin content search. This one is interesting because the search module by default just provides the front end. But when we are in the content page, we want to be able also sometimes to search the content items. So this adds the new tab here. And what it needs is in the admin search setting, which is exactly the same as the search settings, it needs an, it needs an index to search for. We could use the same index, okay? And then say, okay, you also search on title, body, and maybe more properties, so that when I go to the content, I can do search and have the same feature as on the front end with the same index. But this is not interesting because what I have here is the page, but in its published version. When I do some administration, like I go on the content and I edit, and I say, I don't say welcome, but hola or Chad. Ah, this is not what I wanted to do. So I start again. Welcome, Orchard. And I will say, hola, Orchard, but save it, not publish it. So this way, I know I have a published version, which is welcome, and I have a draft version, which is hola. But if I search, and I search for hola, You don't want your father. <laughs> Let me see. Maybe that was it. It was an old search in index. And if I search for hola, you see, it was index was not updated. It works perfectly. Exactly what we, what we wanted. I will cut the video, don't worry. Um, <laughs> so if we search for hola, you see, no result. Um, so this is not what we want in the admin. We want to be able to see what is the content we are currently editing, okay? and not the one that is currently published. So what we will do is, in the content definition, well, sorry, in the indexes, we don't actually want to index the same documents or the same versions of the documents in the indexes. I want an index for my front end with specific published versions, and I want an index in my back end with all the latest versions. So I will create a new index and I will call it admin. You can call it whatever you want, but... Uh, yeah, 
admin, and it has nothing because we configured nothing to go in the admin. So I go to content definition and say page, end, 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 edit, and say the page is indexed here. So you see all the indexes in the content type settings, is indexed in the search index for its published version, and in the admin index for its latest version. And if I save, and I go to the indexes, and say update, now there is also one document, but if I go to content and search for hola, oh, I didn't update the admin search to use the admin here. So again, Talk to me louder. Why didn't I check? Oh, thank you. Yes, you need a microphone to do the call. Please keep the microphone. So, hola. And it works. Okay, so this way you can even index different content types in the admin, the ones that you don't want the end users to, to see in the search results. I don't know, like internal things, form submissions, widgets, whatever you want to search, and you don't want them to appear on the, on the front end. Another feature you might want, and that is not in 192, but that is in dev, is something that Nick did, who else, is a way, is a way to have a widget here. When you create a widget like the search widget, you will be able to define which index you want the front end to search into. This way you can have multiple search forms in your website pointing to different indexes. And in the URL is just something like, uh, search slash, let's say, admin the index search and what you want to search into. Okay? Um, so that's it for the search engine. And with that, you know almost everything from the modules. Last thing is very simply media library search. When you enable it, it will create a new index called media. It will configure all the media content types to be indexed in these, content, uh, these indexes in their latest version. And also, when you go to the media page, you will have a new search box, so you can do searches on your media items. Okay, another feature that is, uh, that is useful. And uh, that's it. So I'm going, going back to the slides, just to note this one. Talk about um, how it works. So, the index API is the one which will do most of the work and is also providing ways to search things. Um, it's based on an index task, indexing task. An indexing task is a record which is creating a database whenever something has to be notified that a content item needs to be um, indexed. And the indexing task has two states. It is either update or delete. Like the content has been modified, so you need to update the index. The content has been deleted, so you need to delete the index. And um, when it's done, it triggers all the content handlers, like all the content handlers like common part handler, and the event, the event named unindexing, to let you define what information you want to index when this content item has to be indexed. So in this case, we see that it's adding a type field, a created, published, and modified, modified the ones that we saw in the index. And it also says store because it needs to keep the information in the database. We'll see, we'll see it later. It also says, OK, we need a container ID if it has a container part, and if it has an owner, the author of the content. This way, you can also query on the author or what container it, uh, it is in. So all the content handlers will be called on the own indexing and provide custom, um, custom data. Um, so the idea is you can define static types like this, or you can have more complex information like the taxonomy part, no, the terms part handler, sorry, terms part handler, this one. Which, is not, which doesn't know what information is in the field by default, but it will browse all the terms associated to the content item and create, for each field, store the ID and the non-ID version. So in the context document index.add, 
it will take the name of the field of the taxonomy, like colors, and get the title of the taxonomy as a text. And it will also save the colors-id with the ID of the taxonomy. This way, you can do searches on all the values of the taxonomy terms in the, um, in the content item. And it will also browse all the, parents, the parent terms of each term that is associated to the, to the content item to also add them to the same document. So it's also interesting in the way that every feed, like colors, can have multiple values in the document. So it might be red, blue, yellow, whatever. And the document will have all these values. So looking for one of these values will work. So it's a multi-value field. And this is very, very useful sometimes, we'll see. Um, so this is how it works. A content handler calls on indexing. You add value fields. And then you have three different methods on the field that you want to add, if I go there. So store, I will start with remove tags. Remove tags is used in the body part, body part, body part handler. The goal of this method, remove tags on the add here, is that we don't want the index, the content, to contain the HTML tags of the body. The body is, uh, is HTML, contains P, div, spans, whatever. So we don't want a search result on span to return all the pages, because all the pages have span. So we want to extract it and just get the, docu the, the, the document text. So this is what, why we call remove tags. And then we call analyze, so that the content is tokenized, is um, the word is normalized, like put into lower cases, removed all the accents. Also, it can be um, transformed to the, the um, common form of a, v of a word. For instance, if you say body and bodies, it will store body. And if you search for bodies, it will also search for body. So it will, I don't know the term for that, but um, stem, maybe. I don't know. Um, so this is what it will do. So this is very useful for uh, text entered by the user. And then there is stored. Store will, so by default when you add a field, it doesn't care about the value. It cares about the normalized value, tokenized, and let's say hashed, something like stored, but I just care about searching it. I don't care about returning the actual value that was stored. But store will tell the index to also store the value because while when we do a search query and we retrieve the document, we might want to be able to read the actual values. Even though when you search with something, it was part of the value. So this, this, is, the, this is depending on what you want to do with the, the values in the index. Okay. Um, so that's it for the indexing API. Something which is very interesting to see when a search query doesn't work is to see what is actually in the index. So look.net will let you see that. Let me open the actual index from Lucene in the, in the website. So here, if you go to app data, size, and the default site, you will see an indexes folder. Here, the XML documents for each of the indexes is the, contains the settings of this index, and more importantly, the current state of the update. So it says, I'm in update mode. I have indexed up to the, 15, uh, the number 15 of documents, and last time was this thing. So this way, multiple machines can know where they are in the indexing process and have their own local indexes. And inside the folders, you have the actual Lucene indexes with their, sp their specific format. But we don't know what's inside the index and what values. So sometimes the search engine doesn't render anything and we know that it doesn't work. Or maybe you should look into the, the thing. So if we open um, look.net, it's on Codeplex. I will open this folder. Okay. And I can see, in this index, all the fields that are available, like we did. Um, and we can look at the documents and see that there is nothing. There should be one. That's weird. Or maybe because I'm read-only. Because you see, there is all the data here, all the 
tokens in the body field content created. This is what it will search for. So I don't know if this is a bug or not, but I see no document here. Try to show all dots. I don't know. It usually works. I broke it. Oh, nine maybe? No. That's win. Okay. It, you'll try it, it will work. I don't know. We'll see when we have more documents. Maybe it will, work, it will work when we have more documents. So that's it about how it works. Uh, now the search API. The search API is how to reuse an index to do actual searches. Three important interfaces. The iSearch service, this is the simplest thing you can use. If you use the search module, the iSearch service will let you do a simple full text search. You type a query, it returns a document. Done. The index manager will let you manipulate different indexes and create re um, searches on these indexes. And, um, and also list all the available indexes. But mostly, uh, to ma yeah, no, sorry. It's mostly to manage indexes. And the index provider is the one for a specific index which will let you provide custom search queries using the create search builder method. So we just actually need the iIndex provider and create search builder. So what I want to show you is how to use the index provider and create search builder to create custom front end uh, search pages. And I will go back here. So what I did is I did an attendees module which will mimic the orchard.search module with a search controller and do custom searches. What I want is to be able to do search and with full text to search all the list, the list of all attendees. And then have custom parameters because I want to search attendees by location, by gender, to sort them. And this is not provided by the default search module. So you have to, to build it. So to do that, I have imported all your data. I own your data. And uh, for instance, David. Project manager, job title, city, cute. Latitude, longitude, where you live. Okay, I won't disclose where it is. Is it right? 51.05 and must be, yes. Uh, and you see this is the same thing as uh, uh, Stephen, right? You live in the same house, same location? No. Um, mail, mail, terms, because there is taxonomy with countries and there is um, title, and that's it. So I will import this thing. Let's hope it works. I might have to create a taxonomy first. I just fixed it. Module, I will enable the import-export module. And import this content. Oh, you see, it was a long process. First, I exported the events in Excel. Then I have to export Excel to CSV because I found a CSV to JSON. And when I had JSON, I created a JavaScript script to create the XML. Awesome. Thank you. Cancel. Ah. Import. Crossing fingers. Worst case, I create the taxonomy and re-import again. It's working. And if it's not working, I'm sure Sipke fixed it in the dev branch already. <laughs> or in the import export branch, maybe? I don't know. It should be part of that. OK. It's I'm using 19x, 192 actually. Yeah. So it's working because it's long. Maybe it's too long. So the idea with that I want to show is how to do a simple search with a full text of the title and of the job title. Okay, So I can look for project managers, developers, or names. I want to be able to filter by specific values, like female, male. Okay, <coughs> How do you say that? Um, ah, oh, it worked. And I want to be able to do faceted search and also spatial search. So we'll see that. So here, if I go to my content now, it's imported. 
I have everything. I have the country that actually me worked fine, so I have everything. Okay, good. And I have everyone. But the ones who registered, who didn't register. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so now what we need to do is, we are, we are in controller, we need to enable the module, and we have an I index provider, an I content ma uh, provide manager. I will create the index called attendees, and I will say, ooh, delete. Attendees, and I will just say that an attendee content type is indexed in the attendees here with a published version. Oh, it was already imported. Good. Save. So if I go to the indexes and I will update it, I will have 63 attendees. Okay. Um, and if I did, a, if I configured my search engine to use the attendees. You see all the fields I have. I can search for the job title and the title, and that will be OK so far. It will use search results. I'm fine with that. And if I do here, David, David, David Moons. And if I do developer, I have more than that, OK? If I do designer. None. Design. No? Oh. Yeah. Designer. And look at that. Designer and design written the same thing because it has been normalized automatically by Lucene. So, um, yep. How do you call designers, uh, George? I, I forgot. Theme engineers or whatever? Theming, Theming engineer. Okay. Um, OK. So now let's go to our custom search. And this one, I need a public action result, a controller, index, string queue. And this is the simplest thing you can do. If not string dot is empty or null queue, if I have a research, I can do the search. So I will do I index provider dot create search builder. I want to create a search builder which will let me do queries. And I will give the index name. So here I know it. It's attendees. And there I can just say um, search. And I will do search dot. So here you have the, um, the search API. And the default one is to do a parse. Parse will parse a search query. And it just needs the query and the fields. Sorry. We'll use this one. The fields you want to query on. So I will use the title and I will use the attendee. No, it was title and attendee dash, 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 job title. And then it needs the query, Q. And if we want to escape or not the query string, yes, we want. And it's this, this is the default. Because let's say I type C sharp. C sharp might be a custom char or a custom query in Lucene language. So we want to escape the, the result that the user enters. Uh, so there is no security leaks or bugs because the query will be wrong. So e here I will say escape true. This is the default, but at least I'm explicit. Uh, here, done. And then, from that, you can do search dot um, search, which will give you a list of search hit. Okay. So I will just copy paste the code from my backups. So I spare you with the details. If I find it, um, search source this one. So here I have the queue, and I will explain the code after that. Here, like this. So the code is the same, search builder instead of search, title, content item ID. So the search 
um, method will return a list of search hit. A search hit as a way to get the document and the data which is stored and more stuff, and also the ID of the content item. So here, the content item IDs will be the list of the search results. And then I use the content manager to load these content item IDs. And I cast them as dynamic because I want to access all the fields of these content items. I want to access the fields to create uh, an array containing the title, job title, and everything, even the country by looking into the terms. And I will return the, the result into JSON. Okay? Results here. I save it. It should build. And this can be taken literally from the search controller, the default one, the search module. And if I go on search, so this is now, oh, I need to enable the module. The module, I'm going there. And if I go on the attendees module and I search for developer, I get my JSON document with all the developers. Okay? And if I search for uh, David, I will get David. If I search for George, there is not enough space on the screen. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty interesting. Lots of George. And so you see, it, it will look in the two fields I defined. And this is just a, a, a result there. Um, so next, check my notes. We have the list of attendees. Now I want to add a filter, a filter on some discrete values. Here, the female and male. So discrete values meaning I know them. It's not full text. I know the values that can be there, female and male. The only difference is that they are strings, and they can be analyzed. They will be analyzed by default. Because it's a text field, the text field in Orchard will be indexed and analyzed by default. So I need more. Um, terms in the query to be sure that it's not the, because female and male contain male, two of them, and it could be conflicting, so you will see it's uh, simple. So what I need for that, I will take my source again, is just, let me show you, where is that? Here, I just need that. So here, after passing with the search builder, I update the search builder with the gender which will be passed as a parameter here. So it's search string gender. If gender is specified in the search query, we update the query by saying, look into the field named attendee gender and look for this value. And filter the first, the previous result with this thing. So it's like applying another uh, lookup onto the results of this query. And this should just work. So if I go back on here, Reloading the module which has been updated. And I say ampersand gender. That's a bad query, but I will fix it later. None female is named George in, in the attendance. So if I look for developer, there are more, OK? Christina, Anna, Rosanna. So it's looking for the job title. And I can even look for, yeah. And you can remove it, and it, there will be no more filter. So it works. And so I'm doing it using the query string just to show you how it works. But in the ideal world, you build a UI with that to query that. So it's a text box or drop down, whatever. And it can be based on postback or with a nice uh, MVVM client, what you want, and it will work perfectly. So now it's a filter. We see full text, we see filter and discrete values. Now I want to order. So to order, I will take the same file, which is here, and I will, not this one, and I will add order like this. So order, so I just look for the string order, and if it's set, and it's called created, because I don't want to order on anything, on everything, we just call sort by date time with the field we want to order on, created. Creating being provided by command part. Save it, F5, C and created in my import tool was from the registration. So we will be able to see who registered first. The one who tell me who registered first wins the prize. Sebastian. 
Antoine wins because he registered first. I was second. Yeah, you don't know Antoine. I was not even announcing the website, he already registered. Antoine. So Q developer, and now I can say, among the developers who registered first, and order equals created. Maybe it didn't work. Did it work? Is it possible? No, no, but I, I, I'm not saying that. So if I remove, if I say Q equals, uh, I don't know, A, no. I won't find you, but it works, I'm sure. So if I say Q, well, George, it will be easy to see if it works because there is a date field. Is this number, yes, the number are bigger here. You see, 65, 53, 45, so it works. Okay, so it's ordered. So now we have orders, filter on discrete, we have full text, I want facets. Facet, let me show you what it is. Let's look at Amazon. The first thing you see on Amazon is that I was looking to print badges and my wife is looking for boots, okay? <laughs> because we use the same account. Otherwise, if you look com for computers, that's true. That's my, my, Amazon knows my life and my wife's life. It's crazy. What else do we have? What is she doing? <laughs> Stop it. Don't, oh, I need a dongle, you see? Often, it's beautiful. I'm, I love Amazon. Uh, computers. <laughs> I'm sure they know what I want before I want it. Computers. If I look at computers, very nice search engine. I can filter based on specific dimensions, like price, customer review packaging options, seller. And these dimensions can be um, cumulative, like I could search for uh, one and two, and sometimes also hierarchical, like red or light red, and not just red, okay? So you can think uh, things like that. So this is a facet. A facet is a dimension, and you want to filter things based on these dimensions. And these dimensions, they are not created uh, automatically by the search engine. You, as a developer, you define the values of the dimension, or a customer defines the values. And with that, you see the 8 million to 43,000 and so on. This number is the number of results that if you clicked on this value, would match on the current filter. So let's say I do, I search for something like a computer, well, computer, and I say uh, black, black computer, I don't know. I know that based on these results, if I click on, oh, they, stop, they don't show it any anymore? Well, they could say flash furniture 23, meaning, well, for this category, there are 23 results of your, based on your current uh, filter. So this is a very nice filter. And you can do it with Orchard. There is nothing to do, it's there. Who did know that? Who used that? You see? It's the end of the meeting, of the session. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. um, so how to do that? Let me show you. It's very easy. It's so easy, it's like crazy. So what we need is first to define our dimensions. I will just create two dimensions, just to show you how it works, and you can expand it to anything. So my, my first dimension will be uh, using the gender. Gender, I have male and female. I, I could want to filter by male and by female. And it will use the, the search here, but I want to know the result before doing it. Like, what is the the proportion. So to do that, I will create a facet named male facet and female facet. So let me use the source code here and explain you how it works. Um, facets here. So I will first create the facets. So I still compute my results, okay, like this, but um, here, on the search builder, which was called to create the results, I'm also calling get bits. So this thing contains the search query. And calling get bits instead of search won't search just the results, but will give me for all the documents if the document is a hit or not. So if I have 20 documents in my index, and there are just five results for my search query, the get bits will return an array of bits of 20 bits. First bit will be for the first document, second bit for the second document, 
at, up until the last document. So let's say the five first documents match my query. I will have one, 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 zero, 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 OK? And this is how it works. It's just a, a mask, a set of bits for each document. If you have 1,000 documents, you will have 1,000 bits. But still, it stays in memory. It's very small. It's a bit array internally. And the get bits is a high search bits. And a high search bits has methods on that. It has count, because this is usually what you want to know, how many, of, how many documents matches this facet. And you can also do end or XOR. You will see why right after that. So result facet is just the list of the documents which match my query. So if I just do, I will just update the result to show not just the result, but also the statistics with the bits. So here, a new document, result is the last object, but count will be result facets.count. So the number of documents which matches which match my, my query. And this should be the same thing as my results. I should have the count five and results five documents. And then the mail facet is create a new search builder, okay, and do a new search just for at any gender mail. It has to be mail and exactly mail. Give me the bits. So give me all the documents which are just mail. One zero, one zero, one zero. And now do the same thing with female. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. They are opposite. I know I just, I just have two values. But they could be cumulative. They could be male and female. Or they, I, they could be whatever. Or hierarchical. Re so here is just a new search. And these things can be cached because they, can, they just change if the content changes, not if the search changes. So these things could be cached. But what's interesting, interesting is that if I have a result like one, zero, 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 one, OK? Document ID 0 is a match. Document ID 1 is not a match, and so on. So this is the result facet. And if the mail is uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and the female is the opposite, in this case, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, I can know how many of my results are actually male or female. I just need an end. A comparison between this mask and this mask. If I do an end, the first document and the first document is a result and is from male facet, so I will have one, zero, 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 one. So I know that only two documents are in my result set males, and I know this is the first document and the last document of the set. This is why we have the end, XOR, and OR. Because some are cumulative, some are not cumulative, so you need OR, XOR, and whatever. It depends on your facets. So I will run that. And you can do Amazon-like searches. It's very easy in the UI. You just you know your facets. You build them in the UI. Whenever you click, you add it to the search engine. You want mail? Add mail equals true. And it will change the, the, the thing. So here it says count three, mail three, female zero. Exactly. If I do developer. Count 24, 21, and 3. And trust me, it's right. OK? So this is very useful. And you see, it's not slow. And I haven't cached the male and female uh, facets. I could cache them. I can reuse them as long as I want. As long as there is no new document, I can just reuse them. Cache the values using the cache module. Boom. Um, so this is for the male and the female uh, facets. And you can extend it to anything. And if you look at the, the thing here, um, you see how many male? I just say result facets, which is a bits, and end male facets. Give me the count of this new, this new bit array. Same thing for female facets. So expand it to whatever you want. Here I just have two values. If I will do it for Amazon, this thing, for instance, you can use it on the taxonomy. You can say, give me all the documents for this taxonomy term, this taxonomy term, this taxonomy term. And then you know by advance how many results you will have if you click on that. So you can even hide the, 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 the option. So as long as you do more precise queries, you will have less choices for the user. It's very useful. So um, there is a site which actually use, is using that. Let me show you what you can do if I find it. Resources. You see, 
This is, the tax this is the taxonomy, and it's hierarchical. So if you click on United States, it checks that, and it will show you the substate. This is a taxonomy. This is orchard. Okay? And the number of results for each of the taxonomy term. And some of them, you see, cumulative or not. So you can do everything with that. That's the idea. So this is faceted search. Next thing I want to show you, last thing I, I want to show you, is oof, I have backup. I forgot to save the, the last step, but I have a backup. Always do a backup. Um, this one, I want to show you on top of the faceted search, full text search, ordering, discrete values, I want to show you spe spatial search. So the idea here is, you remember in the attend list, we have latitude and longitude. Okay? We have the position. We know what they are. It's indexed as a number. So if you don't know how it works, Wikipedia, Valencia, no. Longitude, longitude. No, no, not this one. What is that? Okay, longitude. Okay. So you can point any point uh, on the on the globe with two values: the the angle from left to the right, minus 180 to 180, and um, yes, and north to south, minus 90 to plus 90. Okay. So every point is like it, and this is what it's representing. Okay, from the um, yeah, from the Ecuador to the Greenwich Meridian, that's it? Maybe. Who cares? So if you are close to zero, you are close to London. And and if you are positive on the latitude, you are on the longitude, sorry, you are on the east. Something like that. So the idea in uh, Orchard is that I have the values. So what I can do is just ask for a longitude, a latitude to search for, optionally, and a radius. The distance, well, this is the number of degrees that you want to search around the point that you're pointing. Okay, like it will be a square. So it's, it's very, you can see what I mean, okay, when I do that. Um, <laughs> so by default, I do one degree. One degree means approximately around us 100 kilometers, approximately. So it would be 100 kilometers both ways, north and south, okay, something like that. So, and how it works is just, if you provide a longitude and a latitude, in the search builder, add a new filter on the field, but in a range, not a specific value, a range of values. For the longitude, the one you specified minus the radius and the one you specified plus the radius. So plus or minus the radius. Same thing for the latitude. So we have a big square. And the, the smallest the radius is, the closest you want to the point you, po you, you point to. And this is it. Done. You have spatial, spatial um, filtering search. So let's try that. What is close to, do you say put, vraiment? Say put, OK. Crap. It's a French word, put, but you don't want to know what it means. <laughs> well, if you're Spanish, you know what it means. Because... Uh, uh, why did I took you as an example? Ah, Bellevue. Let's take Bellevue. Bellevue. It's beautiful. So if I... T okay, I will take you. Uh, if I take your... If I look for now explicitly, without a radius, I will take radius zero. If I say and longitude equals 7.6 and latitude equals, ooh, I won't type that. I could. And I will say radius, a very small one, 0 0.1. I have three results, actually. Not completely wrong results. What is that? I didn't take you, maybe. I, I took some, somebody else, no? I took this one. Oh, yes, I took, sorry, I took uh, Christina. Okay, so good. So it works. 
So I took Christina, actually, and Christina, I found that you know Bogdan. And they are together. Look at that. What? Wow. Um, I know Basel very well. I worked there like for 10 years. So we can talk. Uh, maybe I worked for you. No. no okay. So this works. And now I will expand the radius. What is around Basel? And I say 200 kilometers. Nothing. Crazy. Oh, no. Does it work, actually? Radius. If I remove it, it should, be, it should take one. So Switzerland is, is, no, there is really nothing around Switzerland. There must be someone around, around Switzerland. Then? Yes, there are people around Switzerland, very far away. Let me take someone else. Um, uh, Spain, Alicante. OK, Alicante, longitude. And latitude. Radius one. So we have eight, we have nine around Alicante, and we have Alicante, Elda, Elda is close to Alicante? Si? Murcia, close to Alicante? Si? Let's see if we can go up to Malaga. Malaga? No, Malaga is not close to Alicante. We have more things here. We have, we have Elche, Murcia, still the same thing. Valencia, it works. I'm expanding the circle, Valencia. And I'm doing five now. We should have Malaga. Malaga, you see it works. So, and you see it's fast too. So now imagine, I have this JSON document, I have a Bing map, or whatever other map you might use, and with these controls, you can get the different points that you are centering into. And you can say, give me a radius five, it will give you all the results of the current thing. And live, you can just browse your map and have the results based on what you are looking for. OK, special search. And oh, just this faceted search. So you can have everything you want. So you know, uh, if you use Yelp, you have that. You can search by where close to, to me, or you browse the map and you have different kind of results. Same thing. You can do exactly that with the same performance. OK? That's it. Questions? Check the mic is working first. Uh, I've seen. Yeah, yeah. yeah it works. Uh, I've seen you can um, uh, register an index with a result type. So it shows with uh, a specific uh, view uh, the result. Can you uh, use multiple result types in the same index? Like, I, I would like this attendees to have a picture. Uh, shown in the search, this uh, blog, uh, some summary, but in the same result. Yes, if you if you call it my result one, you can have content page result one, content blog result one, content whatever result one, and they are all for the result one page, okay. and you can customize per type what you want. Okay, okay, so, so it that. works like this. So if you if you find a media, you can show show the media. If you find a peop some person, you can just show its picture. Yeah. If you find product, okay, something else. Yes, yeah. you can do that. Okay, thanks. You are very new to Orchard. That's one of the best features of Orchard. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's better than SharePoint. What are you doing? Yeah. 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 Unless you are a SharePoint developer, that's not better than SharePoint. Yeah. I mean, we like Sha we love SharePoint, right? The SharePoint website is done with Orchard. <laughs> so if you didn't know it, take it as a re no. Seriously, the, the office team is using Orchard like for crazy. Uh, no, SharePoint, the SharePoint, if you go to discoversharepoint.com, discover SharePoint Orchard website. And I work with them. That didn't, didn't. You should say to your clients, why SharePoint? Even them, they're using Orchard, so let's use Orchard. Oh, I'm, I'm not recorded, right? I will cut it too. <laughs> yes, sorry. Sebastian, we've got uh, taxonomies enabled and we've got uh, normal search enabled with body and title. But we see some um, strange behavior when media items are returned that don't really fall within the search criteria. Do you know of 
Any That's why you need that? to look into Luke.net. I'm sure you are wrong. <laughs> no, it's always like this. I'm like, mm. the computer is wrong. I know the search is good. I know the content is good. And no, I, my query should not return that. Mm. And then I use Luke because you can also type the query. You have, a, you have some logging on the search module where it will log the actual listening query. You should log that. Look at the query to see if it makes sense first. If it makes sense, use Luke.net to see what's the result in Luke.net. To be sure that it's not you, it's not a machine, it's the index, and why the query is doing that. There's always a reason, and you are always wrong. And when I say you, we are always wrong. L Lucene is always right. Mm. We just need to understand why. Yeah. And this is why Luke.net is... Uh... Dude, that's true. Why are you smiling? <laughs> Discover something? That's true. You are too young, you will see. In, 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 in 20 years, you will be like me. No, I'm wrong, I know. I, I don't know why yet, but I will find. That's all right. Anyone no? else? Who, who did, well, apparently I already asked the question. Nobody knew that you could do that before. Okay, that's why. Now you will all do that. I'm sure one stop, they want that, find stores. Find the stores where I'm, I am, and you need that. Boom. I actually have um, two questions. Uh, first one is probably pretty quick. Does search take into account content permissions? No. no. Why? Why would it? Uh, you have to do that. It, so it's Honest. very complex. It's very complex. Okay. We've talked about it many times. Yep. The, the only solution is to index the content item and index the roles and the users who can see that. And then in your search filter, you say where the current role is in the list of um, allowed roles or the current user is in the list of a lot of users. This is how the big search engines do that. Like if you use Fast, the Fast search engine, um, companies who use SharePoint usually use Fast also. Actually, it's the search engine for Fast. It does it exactly the same way. It adds a new field, which is users and holes. And when you want filter permission, you filter it. Okay? It's okay. not by default, you do that. Okay. Um, and the second question was for farm scenarios. Uh, when you're doing the indexing, you're storing the indexing in the file system. But um, so, like on Azure Web Apps, for example, it's a shared file system. You use the helpful libraries with the blog uh, Azure Lambic dot whatever, because yeah. they so because you can uh, Lucene is extensible in the way you want to store the indexes, okay, in the document. <laughs> Directories. So there is an implementation for Azure Blob Storage, for instance. This way, if you have 1,000 instances, it will use the same blob, and one only will index that, and everyone will use that. So they made a module to do that. Uh, NuGet.org is using something like this also, and actually based on the same initial source code. And otherwise, so it's Azure Blob Storage, so you can customize it, or it can be also a shared folder if you want, uh, or you can use a, a serv service-based uh, solution like Elasticsearch, and then you talk to Nick. Because he, he tried that at some point, he has some information. It's like Lucene as a service, so all the instances can search for the same thing. Good. Next, last one, and then you can uh, dive in the beach. Thank you. <laughs>